first stop. Ooh, big spider. That's not fun. First stop of the day. I'm clicking. Please. There we go. You just gotta punch it. We'll plug in. We're at the I think pretty recently deployed Redding supercharger. That was only like six seconds. This is kind of an exciting one for me. Oh, cool, 171 kilowatts. That's great because I remember when I first started talking to Model Y Mike, he was telling me how there's this stickler about Teslas and superchargers here. And the mayor was against superchargers in the city of Redding for a very, very long time. But thankfully they are now available and not only superchargers, but right next to them, are DC fast charging charge points, which I've actually never checked out before. I thought they were Electrify America originally. Thankfully, I think it's a bit more reliable of a network. I like the green light, but I shouldn't say too reliable because this one appears to be down. I've actually never checked out a Electrify America station or a charge point. Basically, I've never looked at a CCS plug, I think, in my entire life. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> that is horrible. This thing is huge. Yeah, I know we talk about it a lot, but I've genuinely never actually looked at one. And then there's another one here. Is this Chatamo? Oh yeah, it's Chatamo. So if you bring a Nissan Leaf here, you charge with that. Pretty soon, Charge Point is gonna have to start offering a NAX cable too. So you're gonna have three different freaking cables to worry about. Ugh. But what's really cool about this V3 supercharger location is it turns out it's right exactly at the Turtle Bay Exploration Park. So the Sundial Bridge is just over there, which is pretty cool. We're checking out some new superchargers on this road trip because we didn't exactly leave the house at 100%. And that that's because of you. Actually, it's you guys. Now that we've racked up some supercharger miles, there's a lot less motivation to charge up from home because charging up from home is not free, but charging up here, at least for now, thanks to the referral credits, is free. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to check out some new charging stations and see how they perform. But yeah, if we ever wanted to visit the Turtle Bay Exploration Park, we have a place to charge just right there, which is really cool. We left the house pretty early. I kind of went five miles per hour over the speed limit for the most part, and I'm averaging around 238 watt hours per mile, so still pretty efficient. And the interesting thing about today's road trip is unlike the one we did three months ago, it's rumored, at least according to the weather app, to be much, much hotter. So we know how LFP does in the cold and how many times I got the little pop-up saying, oh, your battery pack's too cold. And you know how the battery would be preconditioning like two and a half hours before we reached our destination. I'm still not exactly sure if that was a bug or just literally the LFP pack was way too cold. So far, the battery only started preconditioning about 10 minutes before we got here, which sounds a lot more normal. The fans are sure ripping it though right now. But I'm curious if we'll get better charging speeds on this trip due to the hotter weather. A lot of the places we go to are going to be 90 plus degrees Fahrenheit, maybe over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is something in Celsius. Sorry, metric people. Tesla may have fixed the charging issues in a software update, to be honest with you, because it's something that I'm continuously impressed by. Tesla listens. You know, I did a video on some changes I want in the software a while back. Like I hated that the word chill was at the top of the screen all the time, even though I'm always in chill mode and they removed that. So the chill has been removed. And when you reset the trip and you have like your current drive data showing the same thing as your reset trip data, then it actually gives you more info. It gives you your trip time and how long your current drive has been. Whereas the reset, you know, trip B planner that tells you like your watt hours per mile and how many kilowatts hours you've consumed. So really smart of Tesla's tiny details that are like, hey, if the current drive and the reset trip are the same thing, we should provide some more context, some more numbers, which I thought was smart. So I got to admit, like this referral program certainly makes Tesla even more desirable to me. Yes, I'm biased because I'm a content creator, but hey, if Tesla wants to reward people for promoting their products, I'm all here for it. So here's hoping we have a pretty uh, easy road trip ahead of us and that we don't experience any 
massive issues. Pretty much the only flaw that I'm experiencing so far is this stupid front passenger safety restraint fault. I've already scheduled service, Tesla, and yet every time we get in the car, it beeps at us and says, hey, service is required. You need to fix this one thing, which I looked online and most people are saying it's a very simple fix. Usually only takes 10 minutes. I wish you could get rid of the pop-up if you have scheduled a service appointment. Like, does the car need to keep reminding you that it needs service? Because the car should know I, I scheduled a service appointment, but we'll probably have better lighting at the next stop and we'll record any pleasant views we see along the way. Thanks for joining. These chargers are really big. Yeah, you want to try the cables? You know what it's like to use the NAX port, but here's CCS1. <laughs> oh, you have to push the button. Yeah. Whoa. That's a big mama right there. <laughs> big mama <laughs> charge port. And then what is this one now? This one's Chatamo, so you gotta push forward on that and then... Say hello to my little friends! <laughs> my big friends! Yeah, really. Aren't you glad we don't have to use those? Oh, this is really heavy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, putting it back in. Yeah, I'm glad. Ours and is so little. Pretty much the whole industry is moving away from this so that we can switch to that. Cool. <laughs> I like that plan. Good. It wants us to keep charging, but we've learned our lesson. Don't trust the maps. They're overly generous with how long you need to charge. So we're leaving now. Bye, Turtle Bay. three percent it changed a lot while we were driving but it should have listened to its original guess that was pretty accurate i think this is officially the lowest i've ever gotten the car it would have been kind of cool to pull in at one percent but yeah you want a little buffer right i learned my lesson from last time people told me not to park oh i think you hit the curb oh <laughs> hit something. I didn't learn my lesson, I guess. People told me not to park in the pull-through station because that's for people with trailers. Let's go ahead and plug in. This is not a V3, but hey, at least the button worked and actually opened. There was a lot more climbing on that stretch, but thankfully the battery only needed to precondition about 10 minutes before we got here, so. Which is interesting because the temperature also was a lot lower than I thought. You know, back home it gets over 100 degrees in the daytime. We went through several stretches where it was down into the low 50s. So I was like, oh, I thought this was summer. I thought this was supposed to be hotter. We're in Oregon now, officially. This is a familiar supercharger for us. I think the lesson I've learned, if you're your first timer with your Tesla and you have some range anxiety, you wanna be careful, just listen to the screen. The screen will tell you charge until this long now you can continue your trip if you feel a little bit more confident you start to unplug when it says one minute remaining till you continue your trip and if you feel comfortable with that maybe unplug when it says two minutes remaining and then you start to feel more and more comfortable you start unplugging five minutes before ten minutes before you can continue your trip but then you got to be prepared for those edge cases where the car might be arriving at the supercharger at three percent two percent maybe even zero if you're comfortable with that now you have an option there we go now we're peaked at 142 kilowatts that's good not the fastest but pretty good five minutes it's close enough. Thank you very much. And we're off to Madras. Seventy-two, nice. That's what we like. Check out those rims. Nice T Sport line. Not a sponsor, but still cool looking. For some reason, on that final stretch, we always get over five miles per kilowatt hour. I don't know why. The elevation doesn't really change that much, but I'm not complaining. It's cool. Simultaneously, we also crossed over seventeen thousand miles on that last stretch. Just as we hit seventeen thousand miles, we also hit four thousand kilowatt hours consumed. So four megawatt hours have been consumed by Pearl. That's four Tesla Semi battery packs within 17,000 miles. That's pretty awesome. But you know what's more awesome? Get connected for free. That's supercharger connection. 
Did I disconnect, hon? We're at 90%. Jeez. We're trying to decide if we should skip the Boardman supercharger, which the last two times we went there, not only was it stinky from all the cows around it, but also it broke. Like after 10 minutes of charging, it shuts off. You unplug it, plug it back in, another 10 minutes, then you unplug, plug it back in. It gets a little old. Maybe they fixed it, we don't know, but we wanted to get some lunch. So we went to a local uh, family owned mom and pop shop called King Burger. They had these things called whoopers. It was pretty delicious, but the V3 superchargers, my biggest complaint, they're too darn fast. We're like trying to get our food and eat and the car's beeping at us like, hey, you can continue on your trip now. And we finish our meal and we come back and the car's almost at 100% already. Like, geez, slow down. To, I can't even imagine what's gonna happen with the V4 superchargers. I can barely keep up with V3. And we arrived here at 5%, by the way. With the, the amount of time it took us to just go to the bathroom, get some food, come back. The car's at 90% and climbing still. What are we at now? We're still at 40 kilowatts at 90%. That's not terrible, but okay. We have probably thrown off all of our trip time because we spent way too much time eating. Not enough time driving, so I'm a disconnect. There we go. Oh, come back. There we go. Put you back. Ooh, that is a sweet looking performance Model Y too. Cool, I love seeing all the other Teslas. I bet a year from now, this is gonna be full of F-150 Lightnings and Rivians. Right, we've made it to Kennewick. I've never been here before, but the button's working. I believe this is a V2 based on the cable thickness, so this isn't gonna light up as fast. It's kind of busy. The app said there were only three stalls available, which I guess, well, there's, there's like four stalls available. I don't know if that was wrong or maybe one of these stalls is out of order, but I didn't want to share power with anyone. But we are definitely further than Boardman, and we know we can get to my parents' place from Boardman, which means this should be our last supercharging stop of the day. So it went pretty smoothly. We got to check out some new supercharger stations, which was fun. There's a refreshed X over there. Look at that, all blacked out. Ooh, and it's a plaid too. Wow, fastest SUV in the world. Sharing space with our little pearl. The slowest Tesla in existence. Let's see what speeds we're getting. 146 kilowatts, I can't complain. The peak speed of this car is 170, so that's just about as close as you can get. I was thinking when I got here though, there's kind of this big, kind of looks like a parking space over here, but I don't think it could reach the Tesla connector for Tesla's vehicles. So this little stall, even though it's a V2 and they probably weren't designing it, planning for other EVs, but this stall right here, would actually be perfect for a non-Tesla. You pull up in a Rivian, straight on, this charger could reach the charge port. But of course you're taking a cable from whoever parks here. So it's definitely gonna be an interesting mess next year when suddenly Tesla adapters become available for the masses and tons and tons of Rivians or F-150 Lightnings or Chevy Bolts even start showing up to superchargers and plugging in and kind of parking in weird ways. I'm very curious to see what that'll be like, if that'll affect our road trip ability, but at least right now, so far so good. And man, I guess back home we must live in Death Valley or something because this is like the hottest time of the day and it's only 92, 93 degrees, which I guess for a lot of you that's hot, but back home it was getting over 110 every day. So to me, this is like cool weather, we need a jacket. And I thought we might run into more overheating problems that I could document for you. Like the battery pack is too hot. But what's interesting is as I approach this Kennewick supercharger, the car never once showed the battery preconditioning warning. It was not a low state of charge. We pulled in at 14%. So it's not like one of those situations where, oh, they don't precondition the battery because your battery is too low. We know that's not the case. The LFP pack was just hot enough naturally from driving around in the heat that it didn't need to be preconditioned, which is pretty efficient. So we just plug in and it's already getting peak speeds. No way, no way. That's crazy. It's 94 degrees Fahrenheit out here and they're saying battery temperature low. Something's gotta be wrong with my car, man. There's no way. That's gotta be a bug. 
How is LFP so cold? It will not freaking heat up. What am I supposed to do to this thing? Do I need to take it out of chill mode or something? How am I? Okay, it's gone. The battery heated up enough. That's good. Thank you. Overall, uh, not a huge charger, only eight stalls and they're all V2, which isn't great if this becomes a more busy location in the future, but very conveniently placed, I will add, compared to the Boardman Supercharger. It's just literally right off of our route. We didn't have to go more than like two minutes from our traditional route if we were driving in a gas vehicle, whereas Boardman is a little bit more off the road. So I'm willing to take the slower speeds if it means that we get a little bit further. But if there's other road trip ideas you guys have or other things you'd like me to document along the way please feel free to let me know thank you all for watching and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos thanks again have an excellent rest of your day